Hey everybody, I'm Lex. Yeah, he's Lex. I am Shane. Rock on, everybody. We got PDQ and A, and it's a uh, U.S. December, questions, and we December edition. Pretend to know the answers, or no? We're not going to pretend. We gave up the pretending. We a long just like time don't ago. know that one. We'll drink, move on. Is that what it is? Yeah, we're very, we're very honest to a fault. <laughs> Honest to a fault. <laughs> I remember when we, I, maybe I've mentioned this before, but uh, when we first started the company, we were discussing, it was really popular back in the 90s when uh, companies would have these different tiers of support, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. And <clears throat> you'd have like gold support and platinum support. And uh, Adam actually wrote a blog about it. I wonder if it's still out there archived. It should be. All the different levels of support he wanted to offer. And the, the lowest <laughs> level was called talc support. <laughs> And uh, talc support only cost one, one cent, and there was no solutions forthcoming. There was just commiserating. Oh, yeah. Like, they could call up and we go, oh, oh yeah, man. That's, that's horrible. Yeah, I really, that's really, really, that's really, that's too bad. really sucks. I'm <laughs> sorry, bro. <laughs> but no <laughs> solutions were offered. It was just talc support. It was just, it was just basically consolation. <laughs> so here we are, the talc support in? version of uh, PDQ&A. PDQ &A. Let's do it. What questions do we have? Dear Shane and Lex, there have been a lot of PowerShell tricks shown lately. Is there any way to tell if a remote machine has a specific PowerShell module installed and make a collection from that so I can push the install module commandlet only to new machines that don't have what they need? I'm specifically working with the PS Windows Update module in case that matters. Thanks, Mike B. Hey, Mikey B. Um, hey, the, that, that does matter. I, thank you for... Thank you for telling us which one it was. And we saw this, this. Everybody, this is an example. This was one that was sent in yesterday. The only one that we were talking about because there was only one yesterday. Yeah. Um, I'm gonna. Yeah, I, I believe, and this is because you know Colby informed me, but maybe I should just pass Colby. I think there's a file you can go search for. Yeah, specifically, is that true? Cole? What do you got, Colster? Yep, the uh, PowerShell modules are stored as files. Uh, it's C, Program Files, uh, Windows PowerShell Modules. Mm -hmm. And so you can set up a file scanner to, to look for those and then collections uh, to uh, ev evaluate those. And I, uh, I added a scan profile and some collections to the bonus content. Okay. Um, did, you do, did, did, we, did, did you add the scan profile here? Uh, I, I didn't. I don't know okay. if anyone no, else did. I, but it's in, the, it's in the bonus content? Yep. So when you so grab that, there's the this, so there's going to be two XML files. So there's one for the scan profile, mm -hmm. and then there's going to be one for the report. You said it was collection. Collection, yes. Collection. So just import both of those or each of those. Remember to scan the computer. So you're using a file scanner. Yep. And in this case, thank you for giving us the name of the module. You're just looking for that module, the file that represents that module. Be and sure that after you make that scan profile, you do have to go run that. Unless you put a trigger on it, those will not run unless yeah. you, you kick them off. So, <clears throat> But uh, this, just keep in mind that, that this is, if, the, if the, that module exists, whether or not it's been loaded, right? We don't know. Right, yeah. The, this only shows if it's installed, not if it's loaded. Gotcha, okay. Hopefully, the, check out the bonus content, and hopefully that'll help you out. File Here's, Shane and Lex. File are awesome. Here's a novel. Right. I use schedules <coughs> in deploy that are linked to old collections in inventory. My deploy setting is five day auto approval. Is there a way to prevent a package from updating its version variable in inventory until the package is approved in deploy? Once the package becomes available in deploy, all PCs are automatically sent to the old collection in inventory. Because I have not approved the package, schedules in deploy will start to deploy outdated packages to all computers in my center. Thanks, Joshua L. Hey, Joshua. Um, there is not a feature to do exactly what you are asking. In other words, uh, t you know, having the the uh, version that we use in our collection library only changed corresponding to those approvals. Number one, you can have multiple approvals. Um, so you could have one. You could have one auto download package that is approved after one day that goes only to test computers. What you're going to want to do is. When, when you're deploying this from a schedule is to have the stop deploying to computers once they succeed. Thank you. I read your mind. <clears throat> when you deploy from a schedule, and you're hopefully if you're using the, the, uh, the old collections in the collection library, you're doing that. So what we'll say, that we'll just go with, I'm not sure. We'll Let's go, go with Chrome. Chrome, yeah. Chrome is a great one. So you've got a, you've got a, let's go to, 
You got Java highlighted. I got it. Yeah, it's okay. <clears throat> so we'll see. Look at this package uh, tab. In this package tab, you will see Java 8 update 191 build 12. So a new version of Java comes out. Um, all those computers that were in the latest Java collection are now in the old. However, this hasn't been approved to the new version yet. And if you had this option set of stop deploying to targets once they succeed, they're not going to receive this again. It's not going to deploy. Even though it says deploy to the old, they're going to say, oh, this, this target is in the target history and already received this particular package. Once that package, the new package is approved, then 191 will get replaced and those will, uh, will be applicable to it. And so just this see is a little stopgap. So you know your target mm -hmm. history runs off version, so your target history won't swap out until yeah, the version not until, swaps out. Not until, not until that's been updated. Um, and then another way, we, we, should, we, we can take this under consideration of, some, of some, some trigger, but there's no guarantees on that one. We do have some customers that uh, just maintain for those, those applications that they want to care, uh, that they, they take care of, they maintain their own variables. Variable, yeah. So you can go into, you can go into inventory and go to your uh, options, options variables. variables. Now these are the system variables. These are the variables that we provide. That's why they're kind they're of grayed out. Proceeded with a dollar sign. Yeah, if they if they if they begin with a dollar sign, that means it's what's called a system variable, something that we usually control. Then there's the custom. You could create a custom variable, and, and just call it the the. If you don't if you if you use the the uh, at sign, the at sign is actually what um, begins a custom variable. But you don't actually have to type it in. You can just say something like, you know, Java version. And then you'll see that I hit tab, it automatically formats it with an at. And then you can type in your version there. Um, this is, and then reference that, create a collection referencing mm -hmm. that variable. And then you change it when you've approved it. That's another way around it. If, if you want to see how to do that and how to copy the, uh, the collections and stuff, I did a video on inventory variables and I did that exact thing. So that video will walk you through how to do that. And then you'll be able to control when that variable or those version numbers change. But it is important when you're talking about deploying software, especially from schedules, check that stop deploying once they succeeded um, because it, it, it is tied to that particular version of an attached package. Once it's updated, that, that history gets wiped out and it will take the next, uh, the next version. So. Yep. Hey there, Shane and Lex. Can we start a package from PowerShell? Sincerely, Paul Y. Hey, Paul. Can, uh, can we start, start a package? Like oh, 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 can we start deploying a package? Yeah. Okay. Sorry, I was like, I'm, there's there's a couple of there's a couple of ways to interpret that. Um, can we can can you deploy a package from PowerShell? That the we don't have PowerShell like an API you know, applets that we yeah. built, um, but since PowerShell does uh, is able to utilize this command line, we have command line um, utilities. PDQ deploy is a command line utility. And uh, so you can use PowerShell to, to call. You're just going to a command prompt. But yep. And then basically you'd be doing like a PDQ deploy. and To change the path, you want to, you could actually do this. You're going to make it easier on them? Oh, well, yeah. There you go. Open an elevated command prompt or open an elevated <clears throat> PowerShell prompt. And you do that. Courses are awesome. <laughs> Apparently Chris has got a hold of this like machine. We've been hacked. And then you can type in you can type in your PDQ deploy there. If you go to uh, well actually change the elevated command prompt. If you do this this one, it actually uh, the regular command prompt it actually goes to that directory. And the, the usage statement is there. You can just type in PDQ deploy without anything, hit enter, and you'll see the usage statement, kind of the parameters mm -hmm. that are used uh, to to to. to to do that. So the answer is yes. Just check out PDQ deploy. Is there anything you want to add to that, Colbster? Putting you on the spot here? <laughs> uh, no, I, I think you covered everything. All right. Again, guys, I'm going to point you back to the videos. There's a video on command line that you can watch that uh, I've done. So yeah, it can be it can be very helpful if you don't want to take the time to have to you know, open the open the you know where you want to deploy it or mm -hmm. you have a script that you want to run then. You know, the nice thing about watching our videos is when you can do it when you want, and if you squint really, really hard, I look like Brad Pitt, so. <laughs> if you have an amazing really imagination, 
You rub and unbelievable Vaseline power on your eyeballs. <laughs> he can look like pretty much anything. That's true. All I right. will say this though: he gets more. You look like John Goodman yeah. than anybody else, don't no, you? Not, not lately. Not lately. I get Ever since he lost weight, I get. The, oh yeah. yeah. I get the uh, power move. I've been getting a lot of Alec Baldwin. Okay. Hmm. Well, you know what? I love his wit. I love Alec Baldwin's wit. So rock on. Although John Goodman, man, I watched Raising Arizona recently again. Well, I think John Goodman's an amazing, amazing actor. actor. I don't it's necessarily want to look like him. I mean. Anyway, hopefully that answers your question <laughs> there, bro. Dearest Chain and Lex, I'm hoping you can help clarify how deployments work with a monthly trigger as well as a heartbeat <laughs> trigger. I have my Windows update set to run once a month, a few days after typical release dates, and then a heartbeat after that. Does the heartbeat only apply after the monthly schedule apply? Thank you. Jeremy spoke in class today. Oh. Okay, so actually I'll start this from scratch. So we'll, we'll, go, we'll go to uh, Java here. And we will create a new schedule. So what you're saying is you've got a monthly trigger. We'll say the 13th of every month at 11 p.m. Uh, and then you have a heartbeat. Now the monthly is set starting uh, on the 27th, maybe. Okay. So it will only kick, even though it's the 13th, it won't begin to be available or even a monthly a, cycle a month until. until December 27th. Yeah. That means it won't run until January 13th. The same thing has to be done with the heartbeat. Got to pick that date, guys. Yeah, so if you if you want to give the uh, the monthly one the first chance, you are going to have to come in here and modify this. Got to be a day later. After each, after each month, you go off to say heartbeat. Only start working on the heartbeat after, like, the 28th, for example. Um, that's the way to do it because, no, if you, if, if you just take the default date um, with, with any of these triggers, Heartbeat will will start to work right away. As soon as somebody's machine goes from offline to online, there you go. So that is, that's why we do the the starting, and you can you can do the starting and ending, and then just modify that on a on a monthly basis if you want. But that's kind of how you do it. You could preload a bunch of them by also uh, setting the ending date. Oh, so you could do one for each month. You could just do like twelve of them. Right, but that's kind of messy, and at some point it's going to stop. Yeah, at some point because yeah. you're gonna you're gonna see all these heartbeat triggers and. But anyway, that's how, you, to, that's how you do it. There yeah. is a way to do it, but if you just accept the defaults, then no. It, it, it's not going to give you what you are expecting. expecting yeah. Great question. Dear Shane and Lex, using inventory, is there a way to run an exporter report that shows that all laptops are encrypted with BitLocker? I know the hard drive status has the tick box. I usually run manage BDE status command and copy the output. Useful to have when we lose a laptop, and I can prove that it was encrypted. GDPR and all that. Thanks, Adam H. You want to take this one, bro? I'm just trying to figure out where the BitLocker. I know we've got a, a tag in there, don't we? Go, yeah, we, we, we do grab. Do you, you want to throw? Do you want to throw it down, uh, Colby? Uh, it's on the the bottom pane, the uh, the mm -hmm. logical disk. Oh, there it is. Okay, uh, should be in there. Oh, BitLocker. Bit so it, uh, what I'm showing you is the sh there's a shortcut. There's that little, if you click up here, it's kind of hard, that, that top left corner. Or you can always go to View. And it depends on the call on, on, the, pa on the panel that you've selected. So this panel is different from the, the lower panel. But you can go to View, Edit Columns. And you will see the hidden columns. And you can, to, to add all the columns, you can just click the double arrow. Or you can just click the... We'll reset that. Click the ones that you want. So BitLocker encryption. BitLocker encryption. BitLocker is locked. Maybe BitLocker version, etc. Close. And then you can have that. Now, all of these are available in collections and in reports. So, so, so you just have to, to choose the report with that. So uh, you'd go to the uh, corresponding. So BitLocker, you got computer name. You go to the disk. Is it disk drive? Logical. Logical, excuse me, logical disk, is that what it is? Yeah, the disk is the physical disk. So Keep going down. <clears throat> down, down, logical disk. Reading is fun. Fundamental, there it is. There's all, all your bit lockers. lockers. So. Yeah, so, choo so choose, choose the bit locker status that you want. Great logical question, disk. and then you'll be able to, to run those reports. And uh, you know what, make a note, uh, Kelly. Apparently we Maybe don't we'll have this be um, anything. Uh, Lisa's, first, Lisa's first thing back from maternity leave. Uh, and that is, uh, 
we've been talking to customers. Thank you. Those customers that answered surveys recently and said that they would like an additional phone call so that we can go over some of their answers. And um, I was talking with a customer yesterday that really would like a deep dive into auto reports. Oh, yeah. She says, she just said I, I, she hadn't taken the time really. She says, it's, there's a lot of time commitment. I'm the only admin here and I'm being pulled so many directions. Uh, so I told her I'll send her some videos on that, but it's probably a good time to do a deep dive into auto reports because it's a feature that's not used that much. That yes, you can run January, your reports, yeah. but maybe you want to have your reports run on a schedule like every Monday your manager or you or somebody in your company gets this information. These are all the laptops that, that uh, have BitLocker status and what they currently are or the ones that, that that haven't been locked or haven't been encrypted, et cetera. Or I want a report to show me all the Java, all the machines that are online that have an old Java. Stuff like that. You can have those run on a regular basis and emailed or whatever. So let's do it, let's do a deep dive on that. What do you guys think? Yay, I like yay. It. Dig it. Yeah. Do I have heartbeats in this room? Yeah, yeah. I mean, this guy's been legally dead for four <laughs> days, so I don't I'm, it's I'm the not expecting smell that's that giving me away. That's the issue. <laughs> Because he calls it the Star Trek. <laughs> the Star Trek. Hey, the Star Trek. <laughs> I'm gonna start your, calling your, you the Lex. It's pretty good. Literally you know, they have the Spock and the Kirk. I hope you guys enjoy that shirt. Step back real quick. Can you just zoom? Is there any way we can oh, do that? Can you see that? He should be able to see Star that. Wars, but it says Star. We were we gave him that shirt just hoping that he'd go. Oh yeah, I like Star oh. Trek. And uh, but unfortunately, well for you. His yeah, dad's a Trekkie. Dad's a Trekkie, so he had to watch the, so he, the campy he, Trek he, he, back in the day. So this is what Lex said. No, no, I like, I like, I like Star Trek and the Star Wars. <laughs> clearly, <laughs> clearly one <laughs> of those is. Yeah. Clearly, you are a booming, booming fan. I'll uh, wait to see. You. <laughs> He's gonna be like in Ted Two, where Patrick Warburton showed up as the tick, <laughs> but he was only there to beat up all the nerds, and he really was just beating the crap out of all the nerds. That would be Lex. Yeah, the the tick up. and Worf. <laughs> As themselves, basically. <laughs> the opening <laughs> sequence, the dazed and confused, only the Comic-Con version. <laughs> All right. What do we got? Speaking I have of reports, no idea what you guys are talking about. Of course you don't. Absolutely. Dear Shane and Lex, is there a way to create a report that shows which servers are not licensed with Windows? Sincerely, Kyle Err. That's a good question. I don't know. Hmm. Um, now, is there a registry setting you can go after? Colby, maybe I, I, I think there's one that you can check to see if the, if it's been activated. There's actually uh, you, you can scan for this with w, uh, WMI. Oh. Is it? Do you know which? Do you know which uh, class in WMI to look for? Yep, uh, I have Ooh. a uh, link in the bonus content. To oh, you already, uh, oh, so you saw that? You saw that question? Did yep. this one. I was going to make the scanner. Well done. Should we do it? Uh, we can. I can right, pull so that yeah. up real quick and we'll call it. Uh, you want to drive for a second? <laughs> Watch me you type. Call, you want to call it licensed windows or something? Licensed win. Yeah, one second here. That's close enough. If I have to type okay. more letters, I'm not going to be able to type. All then right. You're going to go down to WMI. WMI. All right, Colby. Drive me, baby. Where do I go? Uh, so it looks like it's going to be uh, Is it SimV2. 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 Software licensing product. So just do a type in the filter. Then. Oh, filter. You don't like to scroll all day? So. We're licensing, we're licensing product. product. Okay. Double click on that. You have to double click on those to actually open them up. And is there anything while. beyond that, or is that where it is? Uh, yeah, you're going to be uh, selecting license well, status. Just, oh, see that enumerate. little. See that little. I uh, just like to click, man. Click, click, click. Please click, click. wait before trying again. He's over here clicking like. <laughs> when you're doing Morse teach, code. Trying to teach grandma how to double click. I was doing Morse code, man. SOS. Save the shit, man. <laughs> This is taking a little while. Uh, so the actual WQL query yeah. uh, is is actually kind of long. I, I, I can try to read it to you, but it might be easier to try to. There's if it's no in, way if it's I'm going to type that out. It's in the bonus out. content. There it is. Yeah. The, the, now it just got it just got. Uh, All right. It enumerated. Where yeah. is it? Product licensing ID. There's quite a few in there. Do you know what you, well now at this point we're going to say look at the bonus content if if, if you've already done it but yeah done, this is at least how you get if you done, i mean you can come through here professional workstation you can come here and look at at all these uh, it's going to be one of those but let's just let's just say it's this one uh we've got this wql query you'd copy that 
Now, before you, you close this down, make sure you know where your namespace is. So it's yeah. simv2. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll just yeah, co we'll copy that, and then it, since it's simv2, you just paste. And right. then unique name. Licensed win. And of course, anytime you're modifying um, either creating a new scan profile or modifying an existing scan profile, you need to scan mm -hmm. that profile to those computers again in order to get this information. So do that and then <coughs> look at the WMI, look at the WMI table. Yep, to, see the results. So your WMI would show up if you go to open your computer, go down to WMI window, and then you check for it in here. If we, if we had if we, if had we hadn't canceled. canceled. If I hadn't canceled and scanned it and did it right, there's a whole bunch of ifs. Yeah. Check out the bonus content, but that's a great, thank you very much. I, w I didn't know that. Yep. Yeah, so the, the bonus content links to a forum post where I link to the, the KB that has the uh, what you need to put for your uh, your scanner, and then also in the forum post, I I explain what because it'll it'll give you one of seven numbers, and I explain what each of those means. Oh, oh thank you, very nice. Thank you very much, Culpster. All right. Hey, he actually said more than yep or yes <laughs> and no. Hey, Shane and Lex. In your opinion, what are the top WMI scans that can be done in inventory to create custom collections? Thanks in advance, Joshua L. Hey, Joshua. Well, you know, it's interesting because when we first added the WMI scanner, the, the scanner was added not for common WMI scans that are needed because we had identified a lot of those and put those natively into the, the standard the, scan. The standard scan, yeah. So the standard scan is actually chock full of calls to WMI. Um, the reason we put this in there is just for those outliers that we're not going to you know, put into the product because they don't apply to, to most of the customers. So Interestingly I, enough though, Shane. If you, were to, if, it was oh. like, if you were to go to Win32 computer yeah. system, that's a massively popular class. But we grab almost all that information that's anyway true. just in our scanner. What were you going to say, bro? I was just going to say, all the customers I talk to, there's basically two things everybody really needs and wants. Is One, most everybody uses GPO. Yeah. And the problem is they can't tell if something's been applied, so... We've got the applied GPO scanner. Okay. And that basically is. And it goes to your RSOP. RSOP, and it's basically we're grabbing everything from our SOP. Yeah, that's the result. GPO. Policies, yeah. um, that one's a good one. The other one is the profile scanner. It's a good way to find out who's been logged on. Oh, to what, what accounts have been logged on? On the machines. And that one, that's it right there. I believe I've got a video that actually shows okay. you how to do this one, but those are the two that I find most customers find useful because then you know you can trace down who's been logged into what machines and you know mm -hmm. go from there cool Thanks. also in that kb that i mentioned earlier it has something like uh nine examples of wmi scanners nice oh, sweet. which is your favorite of the nine uh un momento asking colby to pick a favorite <laughs> <laughs> need to uh, look at which the, which the one list. returns you the most data how about that <laughs> um, uh, that's a, probably a different answer. The event log entries one is is kind of cool. It, it takes a while to scan, but it's it, it's cool that you can query the event log uh, from WMI. Mm. That's great. Thanks, Cole. That's very cool. <clears throat> Play around. I mean, WMI is really just it, it's it's like massively powerful. Yeah, it's like storage wars. You know, you, you can just you can. There's so many things you can find, but it does it does take some stepping over boxes and and. You're going to be massively disappointed quite a bit of the time, but there are times when there's something that you need that we don't grab natively, but it is stored in WMI. Absolutely. Dearest Chain and Lex, in Deploy, how do I email the output log from a deployment? Thanks, Dovid <coughs> H. Well, it's not automatic. Emailing? It's, a, it's not stored in the database, it's stored in the file. So if you really want it, you'll have to actually go grab it. Um, what he's talking about is if we have any. Any deployments? Uh, check Chrome. I think I deployed. Yeah. So we can go here, output log. At that point, there's there's not a way for this is this is actually a file that's that lives on. It's just a text file that lives on your deploy server. Um, you just have to copy this and, and email it. There's not a there's not an automatic way of doing that. There are ways of sending deployment set, emailing deployment statuses and stuff like that, but the uh, output log is not one of them. I'm just waiting for Chris to just run in here, sprint in here, and go. We can do it through PowerShell. PowerShell. Yeah, it's just not a native feature. Oh, I mean, just state that. Oh right yeah. Now. Okay. Yes. I, I can do that for Chris. I mean, honestly, these are meant for troubleshooting. 
What was that, Colby? Uh, I, I can preach power f uh, PowerShell for Chris. So you could do that in PowerShell, huh? Yeah, if you used PowerShell instead of an install step, then you could uh, capture the output that way and use PowerShell to send the email. Uh -huh. So not very like clean, but not possible. Not incredibly intuitive, but possible. Cool. Okay. It, we, I mean, those are honestly there for, for those the, the few computers that do fail, uh, give you... A specific a specific error WM, uh, MSI is excellent because we do grab the MSI log mm -hmm. not every installer is available uh, creates an output log but if w, uh, MSI is one that does and you can easily grab that and use that for troubleshooting but to um, to send that to send that in bulk yeah there's there's almost always ways of scripting something yeah. but this is uh, may, maybe you can reach out and if Colby's feeling the, the Christmas spirit, he'll 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 write something. He'll write something as an example. <laughs> Dear Shane and Lex, we are starting to deploy Microsoft Teams. It has to be deployed by run as logged on user. This will install for the current user only, but not for all users on the PC. Any guidance for Teams to run for all users? It won't work correctly if deployed run as deploy user. Sincerely, Thomas T for Tank Engine. Well, uh, I haven't used Microsoft Teams. There are some applications that do require that, it, that they are installed as a user, uh, and particularly like the logged on user. Mm -hmm. So if one thing you could try, it just kind of depends on how it's built. You could try instead of deploy a, uh, run as deploy user, like we'll go back to Chrome here, hit Control D. And uh, actually, let me just actually open this up, I'm sorry. So you got the deploy user. You got the deploy user here. In fact, we might need to uh, just uh, convert that to a standard package for right now. So you you grab you'll grab your step, and then instead of run as deploy user, you're saying you're having to run as logged on user. You could try deploy user interactive. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to have to answer questions, but it could it could be that it just needs a desktop. Um, in order to, to install, you can try it that way. But if Microsoft Teams is meant to only be installed per user, you're probably stuck with that, having to run as the logged on user. Yeah, I had a thought. Now, I don't know how difficult this would be. You could use PowerShell to put a startup task to kick that deployment off. Or a GPO at this point. When you're talking about per user, user GPO is the way to go. Then you might want to address this at a, per, at a GPO user level yeah. that that installs that, and then you're then you're taking care of for those people that log on uh, yeah. with Active Directory credentials. <clears throat> Anything you want to add, Colby? Uh, Kitty actually found a link to an MSI version of Microsoft Teams, Sweet. and uh, people in chat are saying that it. It basically does uh, install it when new users log on, but it may not install it for existing profiles. So that you know that may help. I'm so not, it would I'm just sure. hit, hit for the future profiles. Yeah, potentially. It, it's not something we've tried here. It's something we found like just before the webcast. So oh, okay. Your mileage may vary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes you are limited just by the actual design of the application itself. I love that your mileage may vary. My yeah. car says only 33 miles per gallon. The way I drive it, I'm lucky to get 20. <laughs> Get 30, you get 30 gallons per mile. Yeah, exactly. All right, let's do it. Dear Shane and Lex, is there a way to see what packages are attached to a schedule without having to check every individual schedule? With central server and six admins, things are getting a bit messy, and it would be nice if I could just glance at the package names and see with maybe an icon that it's getting deployed on a schedule. Sincerely, the lovely and talented Kathleen F. Kathleen. So you want to ask which... Not just which which packages are scheduled, but which uh, she wants to be able to tell that Chrome has been scheduled in a monthly or a weekly or whatever, right? Without having to open each schedule. Am I reading that? I mean, you can go to all schedules instead of. I mean, you can go to the schedules for each package, and if there's a schedule, you'll see that for that package. But you can also go to all schedules and see the the schedules. Can you add the package on there? Will it list the packages there? I don't think so. I don't think it would no, be. No, that would be a fairly... That would be a fairly... That would be an ugly list. Though. Yeah, because yeah. there are some that have a lot. Colby, is there anything you want to add? Uh, packages is shown by default. You just have to scroll to the right. Is it really? 
Like, oh, there oh, it is. Hey. So, yeah, you would say. <laughs> Boy, I can, that can get really long. So if we is it common to limited? Just enumerated? Or? I think it is. Okay. Let's, let's find go, out. Let's, let's go slam out. one up let's with a one. bunch of packages right now. We'll do a new schedule. Just add everything in there. Yeah, we'll just grab all. We'll just grab attached packages, and we'll do boom. We don't have a select all for this one. I hope not. Yeah. <laughs> can you imagine? <laughs> there we go. Because there's no right, name it. Let's here. name it... Uh, Yep. Or something like we'll, that. we'll call this a new computer. New computer. So all new computers would get this. We won't bother setting the, the targets right now. Um, I guess we have to. Yeah, but we'll just link to uh, Active Directory Container. And we'll just say computers for right now. All right. So if we say OK. Let's go scroll over. I hope you delete this schedule after you make it. Oh, yeah. we, haven't, we haven't set any triggers. <laughs> okay. Don't worry. Yeah, look. Okay, it's this common delimited. So it's going to be... It can get long. Yeah, you're going to need a really, <laughs> really long. You can. We do have a little hover over. I like that that you can oh, yeah, see. Hover, okay. Hopefully that. Hopefully that answers your question. But um, yeah. Hit and now hit delete. JJ, hit delete. Hit delete. delete. <laughs> we'll just hit delete. Together. Thanks. We got and it's time for the speed round. All right. Dear Shane and Lex, how can I import Active Directory security groups with computer accounts to PDQ? Sincerely, Jory. Okay, um, we, we, let's go to uh, inventory. Thank you. What are you doing? Active Directory Sync, sync is where I was going to head. Yeah. And then maybe Sync. And Active Directory Sync. So this is, hopefully you're using this if you have Active Directory. And the containers to Sync are not just OUs. You can say, I want to include security groups. The only thing is, those security, like group A, these are security groups. The security group will need to have computer objects in there. Yep. So you'll actually have to do that. But if you do have your security groups with computer objects, then you can just choose that group, say OK, and it's there. And, it's, and the same thing is this. You can also exclude, let's say that you've got a bunch, you're not allowed by uh, corporate policy to uh, remove computer objects from AD, but these computer objects have effectively been retired. If you can't move those to an OU that you exclude, you can at least add them. There then that means that those computers will not be um, included. In, in, any computer members there won't be included. So that, that, that is how you do it. Uh, container in our nomenclature is a security group, an OU or domain. Dear Shane and Lex, using the WMI scanner for Windows Store apps, is there a way to filter out the apps that come pre-installed with Windows when creating a report? Sincerely, Billy Z. Well, uh, I, don't, I don't know. Probably, uh, if there's a if there's a property in that uh, WMI class that that shows that it's either installed or I don't know that it would say that it's default. I, you're gonna have to you're gonna have to. That's gonna be some trial and error. With yeah, you're gonna have to dance around in WMI for the Windows Store apps that are installed and see if there is a property in there that that you can use to to divine that information. I don't know off the top of my head. Uh, if not, you may have to just uh, add a whole bunch of filters to the report. Yeah, you can, you can go through there and say, I know th I know that this app is already installed or there's a default. Candy Crush has been installed. So, yeah, so at that point, <laughs> what you're saying is in your report, just say, show me anything that, that doesn't have, or show me any application that's not this or this or this or this. Right. Okay. Yeah, there's going to be, it's going to be some, you're going you're gonna to have to do some. Some footwork there. Yeah, some digging. And Jorlando D. would like to know, for a mass deployment, is it possible to be notified via email on failed deployments with computer name included per failed install? I can go ahead and say yes. Yeah, yeah. When you, it's just, when it comes, it comes down to, and yet another, <laughs> along with the auto reports, we might want to do one on, mm -hmm. on the deployment reports. On the deployment reports, wow, like you get the, the so there's a, there's a couple of things I know about emailing and deployments, okay? If you're doing a mass deployment and you say, give me the detail, you're going to get an email per machine. And I like to do that and send all those emails to Shane because I don't want to read 2,000 emails. So, you know, maybe start with a summary, see how that comes out, and mm -hmm. then possibly, you know, if you're not getting the information you need, you might want to go after detail. Colby's eyebrow went up. Are you sure it's per machine? I think it's per deployment. It's, it's, it's per, it is per deployment. The yeah. deployments oh, yeah. will. Thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. So it was the question that he wants to only get one email per machine. 
or he one wants email to fail with fail. the deployment. Just failed. Just failed. Yeah, you should be able to do that here. Um, you you might need to create a new post deployment notification, but um, in the speed round, I, if we want to if we want to follow up on that one, but you're going to want to edit those reports. Probably create a new one yeah. and just and just say show me failed. But no, it's not going to do it per computer necessarily. No. It's going to do it per, per deployment. deployment. Sorry. Dear Shane and Lex, is there any way to have a computer change names during a deployment and the deployment be able to continue? Thanks, Thomas P. So you initiate a deployment. So you're gonna and the rename computer a computer changes. and then have it keep going. Uh, no. Uh, okay, you can rename it, depends, it with depends PowerShell, on, I mean, I guess right? if you're using like a C name in, in DNS and and you've got uh, two names will resolve to you change the name but the old one is still as a c name then maybe but no uh, once you change that, once trying. you change once that computer name changes it needs a reboot um and then it becomes it, somebody it, new it does need a reboot but we're we're still trying to go you're deploying to that we're trying to resolve that that original name that's yeah. in the deployment so hmm. chances are no unless once again you're doing something with c name do you have anything you want to add colby uh no that's uh like you, you probably can rename it with like PowerShell or something, but that's going to break the deployment. I would, yeah, I can imagine a lot of things going bad or wrong doing that. So, and if we tried, to, if we tried to accommodate that, I, I, yeah, I could see a lot of, a lot of uh, side effects. Yes. Side effects. Yes. There's going to there's, there's there's be some radiation. I'm not really good on the old good bad thing there. You got. <laughs> I'm a little. Fuzzy, I'm the fuzzy. Old, bad thing. Hey, I did a pop culture reference. Yes, you did. Four, but I did one in the house. Now there's three of them for you. Dear Shane and Lex, what happens if we run disable Windows telemetry job on a Windows 7 machine? Thanks, Glenn R. Does Windows 7 have telemetry? I thought that was only uh, introduced in Windows 8. Yeah, it does. does uh, it? Microsoft uh, pushed the the patches, <laughs> uh, some of those uh, features. To, to Windows 7, oh. and, and I, I checked our package in the package library, and the conditions do have it running for Windows 7. Okay. Huh. You know, I think I built that one. I must have just totally spaced it. Whoopsie. Anyway, um, telemetry is a, telemetry can be a kind of a hit and miss thing. Then yeah. I'll say this: there there are some there are some additions of Windows that that uh, even if you were to make the change, usually in the registry, um, it, it's not recognized by Windows. They're, they're usually, if, at least on Windows 10, they're saying you need the enterprise or the education version. If you're using the pro version, um, sorry, you're not. There's, so there's, there's, a, there's a lot of things you can't disable, and telemetry is one of them. So I would say with Windows 7, you're probably good. It's just if we have a package out there in the package library, look at that, do some poking around and deploy it, and it should, that should take care of it for you. Just keep in mind, addition often comes into play. And our final question of the day. Is there any chance that someday we could deploy customized packages to clients with the agent in external mode? I mean, treat them like they are in our network. Thanks and Merry Christmas. Sincerely, Federico De. Well, when you use that wonderful qualifier, any, I'm reminded of I like of that, it. yes. <laughs> so you're saying there's a chance. There's, there's a, a chance. one in a million. Hey, yes, I'm no, a dumber. I've seen that one. Wow. Federico, you just hit gold there. Um, yeah, there's there, there's a chance. We're, we we are looking at that. Mm -hmm. There's a couple of there's a couple of outstanding questions that we have to answer um, to be able to accommodate custom packages, and it really comes down to yeah, either Logistics. we're going to have to allow uh, the agent access into your into your uh, network, so there's a whole level of complexity with firewalls and stuff, or we're going to have to offer some some storage plans or something like that where you can store stuff, but. Uh, at, at this point, those are some of the outstanding questions that we have to that we have to answer. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yes, there is a chance. We we don't know we don't know there if or when. Is a chance. You're seeing there's a chance. There's a chance of anything. Yeah. yeah. All right. Hey, everybody. Thank you very very much for uh, for watching and thank some great questions. Absolutely. And Colby, thank you very much for taking the time to to answer those. Um, and guess what? Most of the answers weren't. Well, you can do it with PowerShell. That's Maybe true. Maybe a third. <laughs> only only some of them. Uh, even a little less than that. Anyway, you guys, uh, I'm not. Are we going to be here next week? Is that to be determined? A few of us will be. Mm -hmm. A few of us TBD, will be. I, uh, 
going to be some well, I understand or that some, some, you two won't be here, right? Some booze porn. I'm, I'm traveling next week, so. Yeah, so am I. But anyway, hey, uh, check in next week, and then I think we're out for the rest of the year. So rock on, everybody. Thank you for watching. Good luck with your Patch Tuesdays. See you later. Thanks for joining our webcast today. Congratulations, Mike B. and Kyle R., winners of PDQ Swag. Send us your info at webcast at pdq.com. If you have additional questions, feel free to reach out to our support forums. And please join us next week for our annual holiday drink-along. Thanks again. We'll see you back here next week.